So people have been trying to make decent dessert out of matzah for as long as people have been eating matzah. So since the exodus, basically. <laughs> since the exodus? What? Since the exodus? Since the exodus, we could say. That's safe to say. A really, really long time. Generations. <laughs> Since the exodus, basically. I think I got it. It was always my plan to release a matzah episode in April, but of course, I didn't look at an actual calendar. So since Passover is coming so early this year, when ingredients is welcoming spring a little early. So what this is, is it's a Passover weeknight meal. It's something that you can easily throw together with things that you have already in your fridge or things that you have left over from your Seder. The first thing I'm gonna do is crush up my matzah for my matzah crust. I'm just breaking it into manageable pieces. in my food processor. And I'm gonna give it a check. And I only have this tiny baby-sized food processor. If you have a grown-up-sized food processor, this whole process will take you 30 seconds, but I have to do it in batches. You could also just crush them the old-fashioned way by putting them in a plastic bag and banging on them with something hard. And that's good. I want it to be sort of coarse crumbs, like that. Crushed it. <laughs> I put them in this shallow dish and I'm going to season them with salt and pepper. To this bowl, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. A teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Squeeze of half a lemon. And about two tablespoons of chopped fresh dill. Oh, that smells so good. And I'll just whisk that to combine it. Mayo is kind of a controversial ingredient in Jewish cooking, so I'm sure there are some of you out there that aren't gonna be on board with this, but I love mayo. And mayo is really good at a lot of things, one of which is adhering matzo crumbs to chicken breast. So here I have a pound of chicken breast. Um, this is the thinly sliced kind that I got at the store, but you could always just get the regular kind and pound it out. And I've seasoned them with salt and pepper. So what I'm gonna do is liberally coat them in my mayonnaise mixture and then in my matzo crumbs. Ta-da! And now I'm ready to fry them. I have about a quarter inch of oil heating in this skillet and I'm gonna test it to see if it's hot enough. When I drop a matzo crumb in and it sizzles and browns, then I know that it's ready to go. I'm just gonna do two of these at a time so as to not crowd the pan. And we want them to be golden brown on the outside and crispy and cooked through in the middle, obviously. But since this chicken is sliced very, very thin, it should only take three minutes or so on each side. Ooh, it's starting to 
smell like fried chicken in here. I'm gonna serve this chicken with what I'm calling a spring vegetable ragu. Now, I had such high hopes for this ragu. I wanted to use all those really beautiful early spring vegetables like fava beans and ramps and fiddlehead ferns, but of course, <laughs> it's too early for any of that. None of that's available. So instead, I'm using what is available, and that's my favorite way to cook, and that's what ingredients is all about. So in this ragu, I have asparagus, some frozen peas, a red onion, some carrots, and carrot greens. If you are lucky enough to purchase carrots with the greens still attached, always do it. They're really, really versatile. You could use them as a garnish anywhere you would use parsley, and they kind of taste like carrot, which is pretty cool. And I sauteed this very, very simply with butter and salt and pepper, and I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of the mayonnaise mixture that I dipped my chicken in. Although I reserved this teaspoonful before I dipped my chicken in it. That's very, very important. And here's my beautiful crispy chicken. And I'm gonna finish that with a little squeeze of lemon and a little more dill. That matzo makes a really satisfying crispy crust. And I get so much flavor from the mayo and the lemon and the mustard and that springy, springy freshness from the dill. Mmm. Tastes like spring. So this dish is inspired by two iconic Jewish breakfasts, matzah brai, which is traditionally eaten at Passover, and bagel and lox, which is not. <laughs> it's one of my favorite, favorite things in the world. And the resulting frittata is slightly more elegant than both of those things, but it's still really easy to make. I'm cracking eight eggs into this bowl. And to that, I'm just gonna add a third of a cup of milk and whisk it together. And then I'm gonna take my matzah and break it into bite-sized pieces, kind of like that. And add it to my egg. And I'm gonna let them sit there for 15 to 20 minutes. While your matzah is soaking in the egg, that's a good time to prep your veggies. I've got some parsley and dill and half an onion. Normally, I would use a red onion in my little homage to bagel and lox, but I don't have one, so this yellow one will have to do. It'll be just as good. The other thing I'm going to do is preheat my oven to 400 degrees. Now I'm gonna melt two tablespoons of butter in my oven-proof non-stick skillet. and I'm gonna sweat my onions just until they get soft, two or three minutes. While my onions are cooking, I'm gonna mix my chopped lox and my herbs into my matzah and egg mixture, and I'm gonna season it really well with salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna pour all of it into the skillet. I'm 
I'm going to toss it around just a little bit so that the fillings get spread out evenly, but then I'm going to leave it alone because I want the edges to start to set. See how they're already starting to set there? And we will want this to release easily eventually, so that's why I'm just giving it a little bit of help. Like that. Now what I'm going to do is just dot the top with cream cheese. And I just like tiny little dollops of cream cheese scattered throughout. I don't want a big mouthful of cream cheese, but hey, you might. So add as much or as little as you want. This is your breakfast. You're the boss. Now when I, can, uh, when I can run my spatula around the outside and it releases nice and easily, that's when I know that it's time to go in the oven. And I'll know it's done when a knife inserted into the center comes out clean. That looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is very carefully slide it out of the frying pan and onto my board. But it should go nice and easy. Yeah, there we go. Gorgeous. Now if I were going to be serving this to a group of people, I would just bring it to the table just like this and I might sort of garnish it with a little extra dill. Just to make it look pretty. But if I'm gonna eat the whole thing myself, which is probably what's gonna happen, I'll just wrap each of these individual portions in plastic wrap and put them in the fridge. Now, if you grew up eating matzo brai, then this really specific texture of matzah slightly softened in egg is going to be really familiar and really comforting to you. And if you didn't grow up eating matzah brai, you're going to know what all the fuss is about. Mm. So people have been trying to make decent dessert out of matzah, probably for as long as they've been eating matzah, so since the exodus, basically. Therefore, I know I'm not the first person to attempt to make an icebox cake out of it, but I think you're gonna like my version because it only has five ingredients, and also, it's a make-ahead, no-bake dessert. It's Passover. You don't have time to bake anything. You're busy shaping matzo balls by hand and there's no room in your oven anyway. There's a brisket in there. No baked dessert. You had me at hello. So if ingredient number one of five is matzo, ingredient number two is Nutella or any, any other chocolate hazelnut spread <laughs> that you can buy at the store. And ingredient number three is heavy cream. And in true ingredients fashion, I'm gonna combine these two ingredients in two very different ways to make two very different final products. What I'm working on now is just a Nutella ganache. So all I'm doing is whisking them together over medium heat until they have a smooth, drizzly consistency. It should take less than a minute. And then I'm gonna turn the heat down to low and let it sit there on the stove so it doesn't harden. And now I'm gonna make a Nutella whipped cream. I put my mixing bowl in the freezer for about 10 minutes just because it helps if everything is really, really super cold. And to it, I'm going to add a cup and a half of heavy cream. and three tablespoons of Nutella. I think I have just enough left in this jar. 
Yeah, just enough. And I'm going to beat this until soft peaks form. Now soft peaks is one of those recipe terms that you see all the time and it's really hard to know exactly when that moment is. For this particular whipped cream I don't want it to be too stiff that it doesn't drape nicely over the matzah if you know what I mean. So what I'm looking for is the moment when it doesn't actually drip off the beater but it looks like it might. Now I'm getting ready to assemble my cake. To this shallow dish, I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of milk. Ignore the matzo crumbs in there. I was testing to see if it would fit. <laughs> and about a quarter cup of sweet sherry. Now I tested this recipe with only sherry. I tested it with only milk. I tested it with milk slightly spiced with cinnamon and nutmeg, and I tested it with coffee. And they were all good. <laughs> so I think the possibilities are endless. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. I think other boozy options would be fun. Frangelico seems to be an obvious choice, but even, you know, Cointreau or Kahlua would be really good. I decided to go with the sherry because it's a little bit of a nod to the other culture that's represented in my house. My husband Reese is from England and his favorite dessert of all time is sherry trifle. So this is a little bit of a tribute to that. I'm just gonna stick a little dollop of whipped cream on my board here so the matzo will stick. I'm going to submerge my matzo in my sherry and milk mixture and I'm just gonna let that soak for about 10 to 15 seconds. Place it on my board. Spread, oops, spread a little whipped cream all over the top. And this recipe calls for five layers of matzo. So just make sure you portion out your whipped cream appropriately so you have enough for the whole thing. I would say it's about a quarter cup per matzah. Then I'm going to drizzle my ganache that I had hanging out on the stove over the top. And you can be creative with this if you want. And then I'm just going to repeat that five times. If you do a lot of baking and you have an offset spatula, that would probably be more effective than this, uh, <laughs> than this cumbersome regular one that I have, but I don't do a lot of baking. In case you couldn't tell by how excited I was about the fact that this is a no-bake dessert. It's the last layer, so if you have any extra cream in there, now's the time. You should have just enough. And maybe for the top of your cake, you want to be a little more deliberate in your splattering, but maybe not. <laughs> I think it looks really fun if it's all Jackson Pollocky. I really do. And this ganache is delicious too, so don't be stingy with it. Now I'm going to make sure I have some room in my fridge where I'm going to keep this for at least four hours, but up to 24. That's looking good. All right. My matzah cake has chilled for an appropriate amount of time and wait till you see how this slices. My knife just goes right through it. <laughs> Gorgeous. And I know there's five ingredients in the title but if you can stomach a sixth ingredient, a little strawberry 
dipped in your leftover ganache is the perfect garnish. It kind of looks like a Napoleon or a Milfoy or one of those fancy European layered desserts. And you wouldn't expect something like this to taste as good, but it really, really does. I really cannot stop eating it once I start. I should stop. There you have it, everybody. That's three ways to win with the bread of affliction. <laughs> and yes, we do call it that, but matzah, it represents freedom. And so you're free to dip it in sherry and cover it with whipped cream, if that's what you want to do. Happy, happy Passover to everyone who celebrates. And happy, happy Passover to everyone who doesn't. See you next time.